So we have one more example before you get into your knowledge checks. Example two, a firm's fixed costs are 135 and the variable costs are 2Q per unit. Find the value of Q, which minimizes the average cost. So in this problem, we're trying to minimize the average cost. So to start with, I'm going to need an average cost function. To get that, I'm going to look at my fixed costs and my variable costs and come up with a total cost equation. So total cost is going to be equal to fixed cost plus variable cost times quantity. In this case, my fixed costs are 135 plus my variable costs are 2Q times Q. Now be careful here. Variable costs change with relation to Q as well. So it's 2Q times Q. This gives me 135 plus 2Q squared as my total cost function. To get average cost, I'm going to take my total cost and divide it by the total number produced, Q. So I get 135 plus 2Q squared all over Q. This gives me 135Q to the power of negative 1, or 135 divided by Q, plus 2Q. So now I have the function that I want to optimize, 135Q to the power of negative 1 plus 2Q. So the first step to doing this optimization, I'm going to determine the first derivative of our average cost. Average cost prime, or alternatively, the derivative of average cost with respect to quantity, is going to be for 135Q to the power of negative 1, the derivative becomes negative 135 q to the power of negative 2, and for the derivative of 2q, I get 2. Now that I've determined the first derivative, I set it to be equal to 0, and I solve for what q would be. I'm going to move 135q to the power of negative 2 to the other side of the equation. I get 2 is equal to 135q to the power of negative 2. This can also be written as 135 over q squared. So to move this denominator back up, I'm going to multiply both sides by q squared. I get 2q squared is equal to 135. q is going to be equal to 135 divided by 2. Let's get a little bit more space here. So q is going to be equal to, oh sorry, q squared is equal to 135 divided by 2. So that's going to give me 67.5. I take the square root of both sides and I get Q is equal to plus or minus 8.216. Now in this problem I have both a plus and a minus option, however because of the nature of quantity, because you would only be producing a positive quantity, we're going to ignore the negative value because it doesn't apply and we're going to have Q is equal to 8.216. Now the qu next question you might pose is how can you have 8.2 quantity? Um, well the reality is we don't know what the units of Q are. Q could be in thousands of units, in which case 8.216 times 1000 would give us 8216 items. Now, since we don't know the units of Q, we're going to leave it in the decimal form. Um, we would only ever do rounding if we knew that they were down to the units, if we defined what that unit was to begin with. But with the uncertainty of what the units are, we're going to be leaving it in this decimal form. Our next step for this problem is to determine the associated vertical axis value the average cost associated with Q is equal to 8.216. So average cost is going to be equal to 135 Q to the power of negative 1 plus 2 Q. That's our formula up here for the average cost. So I'm going to substitute Q is equal to 8.216 into this formula and I get 135 times 8.216 to the power of negative 1 plus 2 times 8.216. And this gives me 32.863.
Once again, I don't know what the units of cost are. This could be in billions of dollars for all I know. So I'm going to hold on to the decimals. So now I have my critical coordinate. It's when Q is equal to 8.216 and my average cost is equal to 32.863. The next step is going to be to determine the second derivative of our average cost, AC double prime. So this is going to be the derivative of my first derivative, which I have right here. So the derivative of negative 135 Q to the power of negative 2 is going to be positive 270 Q to the power of negative 3. And the derivative of 2 is simply 0, so this is our derivative. Now the next step is to determine this second derivative value at our critical points. Oh, in this case, singular critical point of 8.216. So when Q value is 8.216, the second derivative becomes 270 times 8.216 all to the power of negative 3. And this gives me 0 0.487. Now this value is positive, so I know I'm dealing with a concave up region, therefore my critical point where the slope is equal to zero is going to be a minimum. And we can also see that here when our second derivative is positive, we're dealing with a minimum. So now since my second derivative test was conclusive, I don't have to worry about step six and I'm pretty much done. I just need to make it clear what my final answer is that Q is equal to 8.216 when average cost is a minimum of 32.863. There we have it. We've completed our optimization process by determining at what quantity, at what production level, our average cost is at a minimum.